one contender, Thiago Alves, is back on track, coming off a first round finish at UFC 138. He'll have to take out Martin, the Hitman Cantman, and with the Hitman in the octagon, you know it'll be a slugfest. This is the UFC Weigh-In Show on Fuel TV. We're looking at beautiful Sydney, Australia, and there's the world famous Sydney Opera House. But the crowd, they're at All Forms Arena, and they're getting ready to get a glimpse of all the fighters for the UFC on FX. And while they're down under, me and my buddy Stefan Bonner, we're sitting here comfortably in our studios in Los Angeles, California. How are you there, big guy? I'm your host, Jake Ledger, again with UFC veteran Stefan Bonner. And this is the 200th event for the UFC, and the third one in Australia. Now, you have fought in Australia before. Give me the biggest challenges. We see guys that are about to weigh in there, down under. The biggest challenges when you went over there in cutting weight as opposed to if you were cutting weight in, in Vegas. Well, I'll give you the biggest mistakes to avoid going right. over there. Long flight, you're going to retain a lot of water. Don't freak out. Don't freak out and rest that first day. Let your body decompress and last. Wait, wait, wait. When you say you retain a lot of water, Give me an indication of what you're talking. When you right. get off okay. the plane, they weigh you in, right? When yeah. you land, right they when you weigh you in. When you get off, Bert makes you weigh. And Bert I knew, like, Bert watching from Bert the Bert right. makes you weigh. And I know my feet are swollen, my hands are swollen. I, I know it's going to be heavy. I didn't freak out. I was 231. 231. 231. The next day without <laughs> even working out, 220, 11 pounds. I was trying to do the math right there while we were talking. <laughs> yeah. Right. So 11, 11 pounds without working out. So th that's just, that obviously comes with experience knowing that you're going to lose that kind of weight. Hey, and you're going to get really tired during the day. Yeah. Make sure you don't take a nap. Make right. yourself stay up. Go take a walk or something and sleep at night. H how many days does it take you to acclimate and get your clock on the clock down there? Really, if you don't take naps and go to bed at the right time, after two days, I felt like a hundred percent. hundred percent. All right. How many days out early did you go? Flew us out the Thursday before the week before, so in the about nine days, days so about nine days. Okay, nine so days how do you deal? How are these guys who are trying to weigh in right now? Usually they're they're there in their own home gym with their diets. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys who are cooking for them, whatever they want to use, whether it's a Dolce diet or something else. Okay, you're obviously down there in foreign soil. So what do you do? You come off the plane at one at at two thirty one. What do you do to try and correct your diet? You know, I just wanted to kind of. S s Stayed of the same diet that I've been on. So I brought my camping stove from home. Probably the smartest you thing your I camping ever did. Stove. Brought my right. camping stove and went to the grocery store. And every night I was eating these fatty spinach salads. And the plan was to go with lean meats, too. But I discovered a little something called kangaroo. Come on. You're telling me, you, are you messing with me here? You never had kangaroo meat? No, I, it's, not, I'm sure, it's not on the kosher diet right now. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Did you really... You're eating kangaroo. Are you kidding me? Or are you it's just trying cheap. to mess with it's me? It's cheap as dirt out there. I mean, kangaroos are so abundant. It's really cheap. And, you know, first time I was a little nervous. But, boy, Jay, it is tender. It is delicious. And it is very lean. So it's you're telling me. So it's like buffalo meat. That's great. It's like that is unbelievable. Meat. How about that? It's the best way cooking cut tips ever. With Stephen you know, but I was stinking up the whole floor <laughs> well, of our hotel room. <laughs> Tell us what you think of that and so much more. We want you to be a part of today's conversation on Twitter, too. I'm going to tweet that right now. Tweet your thoughts using the hashtag UFC on Fuel TV and also follow us at Fuel TV. Now, in our main event, we've got the potential for fireworks with the pit bull, Tiago Alves, as he takes on Martin, the hitman Campman, two very dangerous welterweights. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, Pitbull Alves, like, what do you call him, the most dynamic striker in the welterweight he, division? He, he, he's a guy, you see Alves like, just chilling out right now, waiting for Wayne. But yeah, obviously early on, right, he's, he's the power that Alves has. Power and precision. He's got my vote for most dynamic striker, striker in that division. Okay, what and about Cam? Cam, then, he's got my vote for most underrated guy in the division. Really? I mean, think about it's it. A he, he had two decisions that really should have went his way. He, he very well should be have won seven out of his last fights at the welterweight right. division, including a victory over interim champ Carlos Condit. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing I 
you know, also about Martin. He's known for his striking, but since he's gone out there and, and trained all those years with the guys at Extreme Couture, his wrestling, you've, you've worked with him, and you were really impressed with his wrestling. I'm telling you, I train with Martin, and his striking is good. Don't get me wrong, but I actually think he's, uh, his biggest strength is his grappling and submission game. Excellent grappling, and really that was evident in his last fight with Rick Story. He actually out-wrestled Rick Story. He's just a bona fide wrestler. Right, no doubt about it. Now, again, the guy he's going against in, in Tiago Alves, you're talking about his striking, but he's no slouch on the ground either. He's a guy that's really difficult to keep down there. Oh, yeah. That's one of his biggest strengths, too. You take Tiago down, he pops right back up. You can't hold that guy down. Who would you say is, over the long haul of this fight, the more dynamic striker? Not right out of the gate, the more dynamic striker. I, the whole fight, I'm going with Tiago as a more dynamic striker. But Martin does got to get him in deep water, you know? He's got to take some of that power away, got to get in the clinch with him. And he can't just do a kickboxing match with Tiago, especially from the get-go. He's got to mix it up, keep you guys. Someone's going to keep somebody pressed against the cage? Well, um, Martin's going to want to keep Tiago a press against the cage, but one thing Martin doesn't want to do is get caught on the cage, get right. put his back on the cage, because that's really, if I'm Tiago Alves in this fight, I'm going to come out, he's great kicks, but I'm not going to use them right away, I'm going to pressure him back into the cage and bomb him out with my hands. This truly is one of those pick him fights. Well, also on the main card, we'll see the four fighters vying to become the first ever UFC flyweight champion. For that... We're going to welcome in the third member of our broadcast crew, Molly Karam. She's standing by in Sydney with more on the UFC's newest division. Jay, thanks so much. Tomorrow night we will witness history. It's the semifinal round of a four-man tournament to crown the first ever 125-pound UFC champion, and there must be a winner. So what that means, and fans of The Ultimate Fighter will be very familiar with this concept, each fight has the potential for a sudden victory round. So after three rounds, if the fight is scored a draw, it will go to a fourth. Now, both Joseph Benavidez and Demetrius Johnson have challenged for the bantamweight title and said this weight cut has forced them to be more prepared and disciplined. Yasir Urshitani and Ian McCall both had no qualms about giving up their titles and other promotions to compete for the UFC belt. And Jay, on a lighter note, American Psycho was my favorite nickname in the UFC, but now with Ian McCall, Uncle Creepy really deserves an honorable mention. Are you ready to give up the best nickname in the UFC for her? Uncle I am. Creepy. Molly, you're Uncle right. Uncle Creepy takes it. Uncle Creepy, <laughs> you got the best nickname. See, I've man. known him as Little Ian for all these years. We just knew him as Little Ian. He is definitely creepy. He's yeah, the guy who's creeping awesome. out. Yeah. He, is, he is a different bird. But, you know, the great thing about this flyweight division now is you have guys who, they were fighting probably out of their weight class. They were moving up there. And Ian McCall trying to go up there at 35. Now coming down here, it's a lot more dynamic. Benavides, Demetrius Johnson, they both fought for the title at 135. They're at the top of the division at 135. So, I mean, that's not even fair, right? And no, absolutely. Let's not forget about uh, the Ultimate Fighter winner, John Dodson. Mm -hmm. He's going to be another exciting addition to this flyweight division. Yeah, I think it's a very dynamic division. I think you see guys drop down there. But Ian McCall is a guy, you know, he's given up a title, you know, to come into this. He's a, a guy that, you know, is considered by many the number one flyweight out there. But the guy's going against, I mean, there's really no chance in his armor. I know. Like, Ian had the title of pretty much being the number one guy out there. And now these guys like Benavides. You love Benavides, Demetrius dropped down there. Right. Oh, yeah. Benavides, man, he is so tough. Look, out of all his so much is acknowledged one. I tell you what, why don't we hear from Joseph Benavides? How about that? Let's bring him in and go back down to Molly Karam with Joseph Benavides. Joseph, you have the chance to be the first ever flyweight champion. What does that mean to you? That sounds great. I mean, that's a dream come true, uh, just to be a UFC champion. And really just to be in the UFC, you know, I'm so blessed. Like, this is my life. And the fact that I'm one of the four competing in the inaugural flyweight tournament, I have the chance to be the first flyweight champion ever. I mean, it's huge. You know, I can't believe this is my life. You know, my inspiration and motivation is at an all-time high for this. You know, uh, you know, we're already going down in history being the first to compete, and I'm planning on going down on history and history, uh, you know, by myself, my one name, first flyweight champion ever. So really excited. This is the start uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to take full advantage of it. How will you be a better fighter at 125? Uh, well, at 35s, I think I was a great fighter. Obviously, I was ranked number two in the world, and I lost a split decision to the world champion. So I think I was right there, and I, I could uh, challenge for the title again there. But... Uh, just going through this camp at 125, I feel it's my natural weight class. I mean, I'm fast right. I'm not carrying around 
a bunch of unnatural weight like I had to at 135. So I was pretty fast at 35s. I'm faster here, uh, better conditioning, and just the, the diet and everything has brought me a certain uh, discipline and focus that I didn't have to have at 35. So, you know, it makes for a dangerous fighter. Speaking of the weight cut, it was very easy for you. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Honestly, uh, I mean, I'm on weight right now. We're going to weigh in here in a few minutes. So I actually feel better right now than I do when I weigh 135. And I think the fact of that is this was a nice discipline process where at 35s, I just ate whatever I want. Then the day of, I was like, how much do I weigh? All right. And I only cut weight that one day. So this was a good process. And like I said, it's where it's supposed to be. I've been eating healthy and really just being a professional about everything. So it's been great. Well, Joseph, thank you so much, because I know the last thing you want to do is talk to me right now. I'm sure you're just thinking about getting some Pedialyte in your system, but we really appreciate it, and best of luck to you. Of course. Thank you, guys. Can't wait. Jay. Well, Joseph, hoping to become the first UFC flyweight champion, a guy who knows a thing or two about winning a championship. We feature him this Tuesday. It's a special tribute to former welterweight champion Matt Hughes. We go in-depth with the UFC Hall of Famer. Check out the premiere of Ultimate Matt Hughes, March 6th. 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Folks, up next, the wait is over. John Anik has the weigh-ins from Sydney. When we come back, the fighters hit the stage and hop on the scale. And in our main event, Thiago Alves brings his superb striking to the octagon as the pitbull goes for a second straight victory. But has he bit off more than he could chew against the hitman, Martin Campman? Stick around. The stare-downs are next. I'm going to square off. I'm going to break Mark Hampton. And then after that, I'm going to finish him. I'm not in there to get a decision. I'm in there to finish the fight and beat up Thiago. Put a beating on him, get a stoppage. Alves versus Campman comes to Sydney. Oh my goodness! While two talented welterweights, Thiago Alves and Martin Campman, headline the event, flyweight bouts make their debut on the main card. Fuel TV showing every fight live. Wet your appetite with the prelim fights, followed by the main card. <laughs> UFC Sydney, Alves versus Campman, live on Fuel TV. UFC fans, we'd like to welcome you to the official weigh-ins for UFC Fight Night on FX. Tomorrow in our main event, it's a matchup of welterweight contenders as Martin the Hitman Campman takes on Thiago Pitbull Alves. Also on the menu, the UFC's inaugural flyweight tournament. Demetrius Johnson squares off against Ian McCall, and in the other semifinal, it'll be Joseph Benavidez opposite Yasuhiro Arishitani. It is all yours right here in Sydney and live on Fuel TV.
What's up, Sydney, Australia? How about a warm welcome? Ariane Celeste, our matchmaker Joe Silva's in the building. The veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer, is here as well. And the hype man, he is B-Dub. Burt Watson, these are your official weigh-ins. And we begin our first prelim in the heavyweight division. Making his UFC debut, Ollie Thompson and Sean the Savage Jordan. First fighter to the scale is Sean Jordan.
170. 170 for TJ Wahlberger. Your welterweights, Jake Heck and TJ Wahlberger. Our next bout comes in the middleweight division. Kyle Nope and Andrew Craig. First fighter to the scale, making his UFC debut, is Andrew Craig.
185 and a half. 185 and a half for Costa Filippo. And his opponent, your ultimate fighter, season 11 winner, Cork the Crusher McGee. One eighty four and a half. One eighty four and a half for Court McGee. Let's hear it for the middleweight cost of Villapu and Court McGee. All right, now we get to our first semifinal in the inaugural UFC flyweight tournament. Demetrius, Mighty Mouse Johnson, and Ian Uncle Creepy McCall. First fighter to the scale is Ian McCall. One 
five and a half for Demetrius Johnson. And that will be the first flyweight fight in UFC history. How about a hand, Ian McCall and Demetrius Johnson. Our second semi-final in the flyweight tournament, Joseph Benavidez and Yatsuhiro Arishitani. First fighter to the scale making his UFC debut, Yasuhiro Arishitani. One twenty-five and a half. One twenty-five and a half for Yasuhiro Arishitani, and his opponent is Joseph Benavides. Your second flyweight semi-final, Yasuhiro Arishitani and Joseph Benavidez. All right, now we take a closer look at the welterweight contenders in our main event of the fight. He's coming out with power, Mike. He's there to send a message to Poppy. He's a tough dude. I respect him, you know. I love watching Thiago fight. He's an explosive striker, and uh, he's knocked out some of the best, you know. When I got the offer, I thought, yeah, I'll fight him. You know, he's got a great name. Kipman is the top of the food chain, you know. He's a really, really tough guy. That's what you get, you know, at the top of the weight class, and that's what I want. That's it. Guillotine is in big, big trouble. He's taking it all over. Tonight, I'm going to unleash the pit bull. I'm going to do what I do best, which is punish my opponent. And tonight, I'm punishing Martin Kipman. Yeah, he's going to try to take my head off. That's good. Make him come in. I'll take your head off. I want to make it a fight. It's going to be a war, you know, it could be a stand-up war or, or just a mix of, you know, take dollars and ground and pound. There are a lot of people scared to strike with him, I'm not, I'm not scared to strike with him. I'm here to get the stoppage, I'm going to put as much punishment on him as I have to to make the referee stop the fight. We're going to square off, I'm going to break Mark Kentman, and then after that, I'm going to finish him. Division, Jago Pitbull Alves and Martin the Hitman Campman. First fighter on the scale is Martin Campman. One 
170 and a half for Tiago Elvis. Sydney, Australia, that is your main event, Martin Campman and Tiago Elvis. All right, that is it for the UFC Fight Night on FX Weigh-Ins. We will see you here at All Phones Arena for the fights tomorrow morning. And for those of us watching on Fuel TV, more with Jay Glazer and Stephen Bonner coming up next.